In this video, we're going to continue where we left off, talk more about activity life cycle. But in this video, I want to focus on how activities interact with each other. So I want to talk about how we can have multiple activities in our uh, application and have them pass data to and from each other and also be able to handle a couple instances of special case activities. I'm going to show you guys a solution for working with a sort of login activity as well as a solution for working with a sort of main slash home screen sort of activity. Because in Android, there's a variety of different flags and settings we can set on our intents, as well as our activities themselves. And I'm not gonna go through all of them because there's quite a few of them. If you're interested, you can check out the docs. But I wanna show you guys a couple of examples of when the default behavior needs to be overridden and we have to dig a little bit into the API to figure some stuff out. But we'll do that at the end. What I want to start off with is passing data from one activity to another. So what I want to have accomplished here is I probably should start by making sure I have an emulator open. That would probably be a good first step there. Now I want to start with creating a new activity and I want to pass some data from our main activity into that activity. So I want the main activity to have a button and I want to be able to click that button and have that activity pass data. Pretty simple stuff. We already saw an example to, uh, for this in the quick start video, but I wanted to point out just a couple more things about it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna, going to jump into my resource folder, my layout folder, and then my activity main layout. So right here we have an edit text, a button, and a text view. So we already have actually all the things that I, the, all the elements that I want to have to deal with, the button, edit text, and the text view. So let's go ahead and jump into the main activity class then. What I'm gonna do here is I pretty much just wanna nuke all of this code right there, and I also wanna nuke our saved instance state I also want to nuke our bundle counter, our counter, and our on saved instance state. So our code should look like this. And then I also want to go ahead and uh, I'll, this doesn't need to be final anymore. And I'll also say edit text um, uh, text equals, or how about a uh, text box equals edit text find view by ID r dot ID activity main edit text. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I, I want to turn these into fields. So I want to show you guys a really quick way that we can refactor IntelliJ to turn local variables into fields. So if you write up your local variables and you need to turn them into fields for whatever reason, uh, I want to show you a quick way to do that refactoring. So if you go up here to the menu, you have this refactor menu. And IntelliJ has a lot of really great refactorings that make writing code a whole lot faster. So in this case, there's this refactor this. Now, if you click on refactor this, it's going to use wherever your text cursor is, in this case, in the middle of text view, to determine what symbol we want to refactor. So that's really cool. Uh, what's better is to use the shortcut, which is control alt shift T, which is gonna be a little bit different from ReSharper. ReSharper is made by the same company, but ReSharper will default to a different scheme of shortcuts. So it'll take some getting used to, um, to get used to these shortcuts, or you can go in and switch them over to Visual Studio style shortcuts if you want. There is an online shortcut options file thingy floating around on GitHub that you can find and use. But in this case, I wanna stay for at the moment as close to IntelliJ as possible. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift, uh, Control Alt Shift T, and I'm going to type in, just type in on my keyboard, F I E and we see field right there. So I'll hit enter, and then I'll hit enter. So what just happened? Well, we got a really nice refactoring where our previously, this was the local variable. Now we have this as a field up at the top of our file. Let's go ahead and give some space in between our tag and our text view. In fact, we don't even need our tag anymore. Let's nuke that as well. So let's do the same thing on button. Control Shift Alt T, field, enter, enter. And let's do the same thing on our edit text field, inner, inner. Just a quick shortcut that I just wanted to point out for all you guys because under getting used to these shortcuts, it will make a huge difference in your coding speed. 
Okay, so what do I want to have happen? What I want to have happen is I want you to be able to type text into the edit text, hit the button, and have that text sent to a new instance of a new activity. Now, the way I'm envisioning, envisioning this is a select contacts thing. Like, let's say that you're you're typing in some a message or something and need to select a contact. So you need to go ahead and select a contact. So you'll start the select contact activity. Then the select contact activity will return you the data. So we're going to start off with an incorrect implementation. Then I'll show you guys the correct implementation for that. Just to drive home the differences between the two methods we're going to deal with. Um, this text box, this edit text, however, is, for the sake of this example, pretty much null. I mean, it's not relevant to anything, but I, again, just want to show the best practice for sending data from one activity to another. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, let's go ahead and, before we start writing our code, create our select contact activity, or at least the stub for it, the public API for it. So I'm going to right-click our package, select new, select activity, select blank activity, and we'll call this select contact. And then I'll go ahead and hit finish. Um, I'll close out of the layout. We won't deal with the layout just yet. Uh, there are some things I want to do to the activity class, however. I want to go ahead and nuke the options menu because we're not going to be dealing with that. The second thing I want to do is something that we should have done in the Android Quick Start, but I didn't want to get bogged down because we were already pressed for time. And that is, when you send data through an intent, now remember, an intent is like a bundle of data. When you send data through an intent, just like what we did with our bundles, you should have your keys be public constant fields, uh, public constant strings, sorry. In the case of Java, that translates into a public static final string. So let's go ahead and do a public static final string, and we'll call this extra, uh, I don't know, title. And we'll say equals extra title. <laughs> really, like, let's say, let's say we have a, a feature in our select contact activity that lets the caller of that, the person who's wanting to select a contact, specify the title of this activity. So it, we might say, please select an activity. A, a contact for your message or please select a contact to block or something like that because remember you have to really start thinking about activities as just self-contained islands of functionality that can be reused in multiple scenarios throughout your application anyway we've defined this and we're not going to do anything with this quite yet in the select contact activity but we use this to pass data in to the intent so speaking of passing data into the intent, let's jump back into the main activity. And uh, for this, I'm, just, I'm going to say button set on click listener, and I'm going to pass in this. Why am I doing it this way instead of doing a closure? Well, for a couple of reasons. A, I generally really do I'm not a big fan of putting your on click listeners inside of your on create method. Now your on create method will have a lot of code in a lot of circumstances, which means it's really important to save as many lines as possible when you write your onCreate method. And by creating an anonymous inner class inside of the onCreate method to assign to your onClick listeners for your buttons will balloon the size of your onCreate method, making it very, very difficult to read, thus less maintainable. So very often with on click handlers, I will do the second method that we talked about in our video about click handlers, and that is have the activity itself implement the on click listener interface. Now I want to show you guys a shortcut of doing that. So notice how on set on click listener, I'm passing in this, which is the instance of the activity we're working with, and you'll notice we get an error, a squiggly, and the reason it's squiggly is because it's expecting a type of on click listener. Now, what's cool about this is, uh, uh, <laughs> I almost called this ReSharper, uh, IntelliJ is smart enough to give us a nice little refactoring through the alt inner shortcut. The alt inner shortcut is what brings up contextual refactorings or s improvements or uh, quick fixes. I, I think it's actually called the quick fix dialog or whatever. Anyway, hitting alt inner will give us two options. I can either cast the parameter to on click listener. I actually should say cast argument, um, or I can say make main activity implement that interface. So I don't want to do that because that's a lie, you know, right? 
like casting this activity to an on click listener that's a lie because it doesn't implement it uh it, that will throw an error essentially so what i want to do is hit alt enter and say make main activity implement on click listener hit enter now what i'm going to get is a list of all the methods i have to implement in order to satisfy that interface in this case there's only one method on click and i can hit okay now by doing all of that three things happened a, we got a really fancy import statement some or for view, which we might have already had that import statement. If we didn't, it would have came up here. B, this appeared. We now implement view on click listener. And C, the method stub appeared. So without having to write all of that code manually, it generated that for us, which is really nice. Now on, on click, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if V equals button. And I really don't like... Um, uh, the variable name v. So I'm going to re. Ugh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to uh, rename that to uh, uh, view. So I'm say if view equals button. I, <laughs> you guys just saw me fail pretty hardcore in that dialogue. See, I'm used to that other keyboard scheme. So getting used to this keyboard scheme is like, ah. Anyway, so if view equals button, that means they clicked this button. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start our select contact activity. Which uh, select contact activity, I forgot the activity suffix. I'll show you guys how to fix that in a second with another refactoring. Anyway, let's start with an intent. We need to create an intent. Now, of course, that import appeared at the top for a second, then disappeared. Now we say intent intent equals new intent. And we're going to use the overload that requires a context and a class. So I'm going to say this for the context and a class for select contact dot class. So now we've created an explicit intent, meaning an intent that's, that's explicitly stating which activity it should resolve to. Now let's go ahead and stuff it with some data. So the cool thing about intents is they are like little packages, little dictionaries, similar to our bundles that we got to work with in the last video. Meaning I can say intent dot, and I have these put extra methods. Now, with the intents, they uh, intents versus bundles, you'll see a lot of really weird, like, inconsistencies with the API of Android that I'm not sure why exist. Uh, it really, it, Android really feels like you can tell different people wrote different bits, because with the intent put extra, notice how there's only one put extra method, it's all called put extra, and it uses operator overloading to determine the type, whereas with the saved instant state we we have these put methods but these put methods are all typed the names themselves are typed it doesn't use the ability to overload the types uh, i'm not sure why that why that is like that i i think the bundle interface is a little uglier than the intent interface regardless so that means we can do intent dot put extra and what are we what are we passing in well, we're passing in the contents of the text box that the user typed in. But what key are we using? Because notice how every single extra has a, is keyed. So we can pass in multiple pieces of data of almost every type you can ever need to, including parsables, which we'll talk about later, and the array versions of everything you might need. But we need to give it a, a name because it's key value stored just like the bundles. So for the name, I'm going to say select contact dot extra title then i'm going to say comma and i'm going to pass in text box dot get text dot to string so this will this will acquire the text out of the text box that the user entered and it'll convert it into a string type all right so we've created our intent we've bundled in some extra data now let's go ahead and start it now this code is wrong but we're going to use it anyway for now. Start activity intent. So what does start activity do? Well, it starts activity um, using the intent that we just created. So in this case, our, our select contact activity is going to come up. Let's go ahead and before we uh, fix the typo I have in select contact, let's go ahead and hit run. I actually think there's something wrong with my device. 
thinking I'm going to have to restart that. So let's go ahead and fill this up with some more words while we're moving along here. And it's still gradling anyway, so... Oh, it gradled. And are you going to start this time? I mean, I watched it on my other monitor. Oh, there, we started. And it registered itself with ADB, so now I can say... I can select that as a device, and I'm going to say use same device for future launches. Hit OK, and now we get this. So now I can say, hey there, and then I can say a button, and what do I get? I get the select contact activity. Really straightforward, not that interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and make it a little bit more interesting, or let's actually fix my mistake first. So this select contact class, I should have named it select contact activity. I highly encourage people to either do one of two things. Don't suffix your activities with the name activity, or do suffix your activities with the name act or with the, the string activity. But don't mix and match. I recommend that people suffix their activities with the name activity. And so the way we can fix this is simply right click go to the refactor menu, and the refactor menu, my, my screen resolution is so low that the refactor menu is now all the way at my top monitor. It got pushed off my monitor all the way to the top. Um, okay, so you're just going to have to take it on faith that at the top of the refactor menu, there's this button called rename, which you can also get to by hitting shift F6. So let's hit that. And now we get our rename dialog, and I'm going to rename this to select contact activity. Hit refactor, and we're refactored. So not only did it change the name of the class here, but it changed the name of the reference to the class everywhere in code. And that's why static languages are awesome. Anyway, so what are we going to do here with select contact activity? Well, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to put in a list view. We'll talk about list views later. That's a whole nother can of worms. So we're gonna open up our activity select contact, and I'll start off with um, I'll start off with this text view. I'm gonna go ahead and give it an, uh, a width of match parent. I'm going to give it a background of four 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 and a text color of FFF, FFF, and a padding of 8TP, and today, how many fours did I have? 444, 444. Four, four. There you go. FFF, FFF. There we go. I put too many Fs or too many fours in that. And then I'm going to give it an ID. So I'm going to give it ID, and I'm going to say activity select contact title. So this is where I'm going to put the data that was passed in from the main activity into this text view. Then after that, I'm going to have some buttons. Now these buttons, I want to stack linearly, linearly, linearly. And because I want to stack them linearly, I'm going to change my relative layout into a linear layout. So do that up here in let relative layout. I'm going to change this tag all the way at the top of the file to linear layout. I'm also going to change the corresponding ending tag to linear layout. And then, in addition to all of that, I'm going to add another attribute at the top of, inside of this element. I'm going to say orientation equals vertical. Now you'll notice nothing really changed here. It doesn't look any different, but that's because we haven't stacked any more buttons yet. Uh, the last, before I add in my buttons, the last thing I guess I want to do is say margin bottom on this, uh, let's say margin bottom on this is 8dp. Okay, then we do a button with the layout width of match parent layout height of wrap content a text of contact one and a margin bottom of 8dp. Then I'm going to do another button match parent wrap content text contact two margin bottom 8dp. So you notice I got that button out really quickly, and that's why I'm trying to stress all these autocomplete things. So people can can really get into this XML editor and knock out all of the elements that they need to. It can seem like it's really verbose, but once you get used to the autocomplete window, which works differently than how Visual Studio's autocomplete work window works, once you get used to it, however, you can just you can just type a bunch of stuff and th things will appear, and your layouts will be awesome and fast. 
well, not necessarily fast performance wise, but quick to implement. Let's do one more button. Match parent wrap contact. Yeah, random. You know what I'm saying. Contact three. So we'll have three contacts. I'll also give this a margin bottom of ATP because we might want another button here in or a couple other buttons here in the future. So we have contact one, contact two, and contact three. I'm missing an important thing here, however. I should give these all IDs. So ID of activity select contact contact one button. And then um, by the way, the way I did that. The way I brought my keyboard cursor all the way from where it is right here down to the next button was I hit Alt and Down Arrow. Alt and Up and Down Arrow will switch between your elements. Anyway, let's go ahead and create another ID. We'll say Activity Select Contact Contact 2 button. And then over here we'll say ID Activity Select Contact contact three button. So we have three buttons, they all have IDs, we'll reference them within our code and everything will be happy. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement this select contact activity, the corresponding Java class here. So what do we got to do? Well, the first step is uh, let's go ahead and deal with our text view as the first step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say text view uh, header equals cast to text view find view by ID, r.id, select contact title. And that's terrible, terrible practice what I just did there because I called this local variable header, but I've been referring to this concept as a title in at least two other places. Terrible, terrible naming. As a result, I'm going to change this to title so that my verbiage is consistent throughout the program, which is incredibly important for readability and maintainability. Okay, next up, I'm going to extract the string from the intent. I could do this all in one line, but I'm going to split it into two. I'm going to say title from intent equals get intent. The get intent method simply returns the object that was used to start this activity. So the intent that we constructed in main activity is accessible to us with the get intent method. Now I have an intent object. I can use the opposite of our put extra, and I can say get extra. Now, in the case of the getting an extra, notice how every single data type has its own method. That's because in Java, you can't overload a method by return type. Same is true of C sharp. The funny thing is the same is not true of IL intermediate language. C sharp sharp could have this feature, but doesn't I don't understand why not because it'd be an awesome feature to have method overloading by return type. Anyway, the uh, the consequence of what I just said is that in order to get a particularly typed extra, you have to specify the type in the get method name. So in this case, we're going to say get string extra. And we're going to pass in extra title. Extra title, of course, is the constant that we defined at the top of our class. Then I'm going to say title dot set text title from intent. Again, I could have done these two lines in one line, but I chose to keep it on, in fact, I could have done all of this on one line because I'm not going to refer back to this title. But in this, for the sake of clarity, I just went ahead and split it up like that. All right, let's get our buttons. So I'm going to say button. Um, let's do. Actually, you know what I'm going to do here? Watch this. I'm going to do a magic trick. Okay. So this is a very important. Uh, a uh, very important technique for dealing with on-click handlers, and that is for repetitive on-click handlers or or on-click handlers that you're forced to put in the onCreate method or whatever. What you can do here is uh, you can just make a method on the activity itself and then invoke that method from an anonymous inner class. What do I mean by that? Well, instead of writing the logic for contact one, contact two, and contact three, instead of writing that logic three times, I can just write it once in a method. I can say private um, uh, private void select contact string contact name, and then implement select contact logic here, right? Now what I can do is I can say find view by ID r.id select contact one button, dot set on click listener, new on click listener, and then I can say select contact, contact one. Now remember back when I said I really don't like having 
anonymous inner classes in my own create method, I still really don't like having anonymous inner uh, the words, words, words in my own create method. The reason I'm doing it here is for the sake of brevity. So select uh, find view by ID, contact two buttons. So remember, all I have to do is type in R ID, then contact two B U, and the whole thing is going to get auto completed for me. So get used to using that auto complete window. It will save you a lot of time. Then we'll do set on click listener, and I'll say new, and I'll just type in capital O N. Notice how I don't have to qualify the view dot first. So another quick tip: it'll automatically highlight the thing that actually has to go into that parameter. So we can do that. We hit enter. And the entire anonymous class is created for us without us having to type it out. Huge time saver. So we'll say select contact contact two. Then we'll say find view by ID ID uh, contact three button. Missed up there. Uh, set on click listener new on click listener select contact contact three. So now we have three on click listeners, and um, we can go ahead and pretty this up by another quick little tip on IntelliJ, we can pretty this up a little bit by closing out our select contact activity and launching it again. Look what happened. Um, IntelliJ replaced the actual physical code of our anonymous inner class with this like, you can think of this as like virtual code, I guess. I don't know what how else to explain it. Uh, as, as, as a symbol here, this V goes into select contact, which happens to look just like lambdas that are going to be implemented in Java 8. The point is I was able to, uh, the IDE cleaned up that clutter for me because that interface only had one method on it. And I was able to do it by closing the file and opening it back up. If for whatever reason you do need to go in and make some changes, you can just click on that virtual code right there and it'll expand fully to what it actually physically is. Or we can hit these little arrows right there. I don't know why I never noticed those before. I guess I'm blind. Anyway, regardless, we now have three on-click handlers for all three of our buttons. What do they do? Well, they just delegate to the select contact method. Now remember, anonymous inner classes have a reference to the parent class that instantiated it. Therefore, we are allowed from within an anonymous inner class to invoke instance and private members of the enclosing class, which we are doing right now to save ourselves a lot of typing and redundancy. It's a very handy technique for dealing with repetitive code. In which case, this is a lot of repetitive code. All that aside, uh, let's go ahead and implement the select contact logic. So I'll nuke that comment. And right here, what we're going to be asking ourselves is, how do we get data from the select contact activity back into the main activity. Because that's really the whole point of this of this island of functionality right here, this select contact island, where we have all the functionality of selecting a contact. It can hit a web API. It can return data. It can stuff data into a database. It can query that database. It can do all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, it's kind of useless if it doesn't send data back into our main activity. Now the first step, well, actually funny enough, the last step of doing this is the finish method. I want you guys to be aware of the finish method. What does the finish method do? Well, the finish method is functionally equivalent to a user pressing the back button on their device. Meaning this activity is done. It gets popped off the back stack. I don't think I've really talked about the back stack a whole lot. It's not very difficult to visualize. When you normally create an activity, and then you create an, and then you launch another activity and then you launch another activity and another activity it's queued up on the stack data structure so that when you finish the top activity or hit the back button that activity goes away and then you're left with the activity underneath it i'm sure all of you guys have used mobile phones this is uh, with the exception of the iphone which doesn't have a hardware back button this is how many mobile applications work so i i i'm going to bet that you guys are familiar with the concept of kind of the stack of navigation. Well, the finish method will pop this activity off the back stack. It'll destroy it, completely destroy it, as in go through the on stop, then on destroy, and throw all the memory out, and this memory will be uh, collected. And then the activity underneath it will become available. A uh, quick side note, if you finish the an activity, 
but there's only one activity on the back stack, meaning like, for example, if we just ran this application and all we're looking at is our main activity, and then we finish that by invoking finish, that will end the task. Um, for right now, you can think of a task as a process. The entire app will be ended at that point if there are no more activities on it for it to run. Anyway, so this is our first naive implementation. We haven't passed any data back, but let's go ahead and run this anyway. And uh, just make sure that at this point, everything's working the way that it should, and we don't have any errors. Okay, so I can type in hello world. I can hit a button. Now I have my title up there, and I'm going to select contact two. And that happened right there. Uh, notice something interesting. See how the... Oh, oh, I forgot. I totally forgot about that. Um... It was good I launched this first. I don't want this select contact activity to extend action bar activity. I want it to extend base activity. And that is so we can watch the activity lifecycle of the select contact activity. So I changed the uh, superclass of select contact and then I relaunched the application. So go ahead and do that too if you guys are following along here. Oh, let's bring our log back up here. So we see that our on start and on resume method was called on our main activity. We hit a button. Now we get our select contact activity. See, look at this. Watch this. Oh, well, another interesting thing. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. First of all, main activity on pause, then select contact activity on create, on start, on resume. Then main activity has this instant state, state saved, and then it stopped, and then it's destroyed. Um, I forgot that I enabled the developer tools, which, uh, or the option in the developer tools, which make an activity destroy itself every time a new activity is popped on. I'll go ahead and disable that in a second. Now watch what happens when we select an, uh, a contact. Look at this. Actually, I'm glad I left it enabled because now we can see, watch this. When I selected a contact, this happened in this order. The select contact activity was paused. The main activity was created, started, restored from instant state, and resumed, and then the select contact activity was stopped and then destroyed. Now let's go ahead and flip that setting back and then look, look at the life cycle again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into my settings. And uh, I'm going to run down. Oh, by the way, with getting motion, you can use the scroll, uh, the, uh, the scroll wheel on your mouse, which is really nice. I forgot about that. Uh, go into developer options and then I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to uncheck don't keep activities. Now I'll go ahead and back up to activities and let's go ahead and hit a button again. So now what happens? Now this happens. Watch this. This is interesting. So main activities on pause was invoked, then select contacts on create, on start, and on resumed were invoked. Then main activity got an on save instant state and then an on stop. Now, why do we get an on saved instant state even if our instant state doesn't necessarily have to be restored? Because watch this. When I select a contact, notice how our main activity is restarted, started, and resumed. Our main activity is never, it, it never invokes the on restore instant state, but it does invoke the on saved instant state when we pause our activity or stop our activity. Reason for that is let's say I'm sitting here in the select contact activity and all of a sudden for whatever reason Android starts to run out of memory. Well guess what? Android can now completely destroy my main activity because it has my bundle and the reason it has my bundle is because it invoked my on saved instant state. So it does this all transparently. Never assume ever that any activity other than the one you are physically looking at on the screen is running or will continue to run in any capacity for any duration. Just want to really stress that. Again, activities are islands of functionality that should be loosely coupled between each other and not rely on any state any static state that can't be recreated in the case of Android deciding to kill one of your activities. That happens all the time. If your code doesn't handle it, your code will or your app will be very not very robust. 
Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear the logs here. And uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just restart this app entirely. After I clear the logs, I'm going to clear the logs again. Go away. Uh, I'm going to launch the app. Where are you? There you are. Oh, and don't tell me Logcat is going to do this to me now. There we go. Okay, so also notice how the main, this also drives home another point that I was making in the last video. Notice how on pause is invoked, then the select contact activity is created and displayed, then on stop is invoked. That's why you should generally, you should release things in your on pause method, of course, uh, your managed resources, but for long running operations, that should be ran in the on stop method once the other activity is already being displayed to the user. So I just want to point that out. Anyway, so enough about that sort of stuff. Let's talk about something a little more interesting. How do we get this data that I selected from the select contact activity back into the main activity? Well, it's a two step process. First of all, the main activity, remember how I said this code was wrong, the start activity? Well, it is. Because start activity, well, <laughs> it starts an activity. But it doesn't set up our activity to retrieve the result of whatever activity was launched. The result. Now, if any of you guys are familiar with the WinForum dialog boxes, Win32 dialog boxes, you'll kind of understand the concept of a result. A result is, in general terms, this applies to many UI frameworks, a result is when we have a form, a control, a dialog box, an activity, or whatever, it's going to do something. And then at some point, it's going to finish doing what it needs to do. It's going to collect information from the user. It's going to package what it collected into a result, and then it's going to destroy itself. So what we want to do is we want two things. We want A, to be able to set our activity up to receive whatever data select contact activity wants to pass back and then b actually go into select contact activity and change the code so it does send data back to our main activity so let's go ahead and do that so instead of invoking start activity i'm going to invoke start activity for result which is fairly aptly named start activity for result starts an activity and then sets our activity up to receive data from that activity that was started. Notice how it gives us these, these two options here, intent and result code. So intent is going to be the intent that starts the activity. The request code is interesting. The request code is a code, a, a, an integer, a constant value that is unique to the main activity, to the enclosing activity that describes that particular request. Why is that important? Well, let's say that there's four or five different activities main activity might start for a result. When the result gets sent back to main activity, we need to be able to differentiate between them to know which result was sent back. So how do we handle this? Well, since we're good coders and we're writing you know, in Java and we have the option of doing this, we're gonna create a private constant integer on main activity. It'll be arbitrary, but the fact is I don't wanna have to repeat a constant twice. So let's come up here to the top of the file. I'm going to say private static final int. And then I'm going to go ahead and do request select contact. And I'm going to say equals one. Then coming all the way back down to on click on start activity for result, I'm A going to pass in the intent as the first argument. And then B going to do request select contact as the second argument. So when this activity finishes, we will receive this request code back. Speaking of which, where do we receive the request code back? Well, there fortunately is an overridable method, not surprisingly, called onActivityResult that Android will invoke if the activity we started for a result actually returns something, or does return something, or ends in any sort of way. So the way we implement this is doing override public void on activity result. Now this method takes in three parameters. The int request code. What is the request code? Well, the request code is the 
constant value that we passed into the invocation of start activity for result. Next up, we have the result code. What is the result code? Uh, the result code is just, it's result code, okay? <laughs> um, there's a couple predefined result codes, things like okay or canceled. And we can use this as a kind of like a special error code. We can use the result code to determine if the operation was a success or not, is basically what we use it for. Now the final parameter is an intent called data. Now what is that final parameter? The final parameter is the actual data that gets passed back. Uh, in, in Android here, what they did was they reused the concept of an intent as a way to package up data. So it's not really spending, sending back an intent per se, in the sense of a real intent that's supposed to be starting activity, but it's sending back a parcel of information. A little dictionary, a little bag of, of data. Anyway, so now what I can do is I can say if request code equals request select contact, then I can say if result code equals result underscore OK, now I can extract data out of the intent. So I can also put in an else here. So we'll, I'll, I'll extract the data out first. I'll show you guys the happy path first. So the happy path is going to be a string contact name equals data dot get string extra. Now, get string extra is asking for a string name. We're going to handle this in the exact way that we handled the other extra for a select contact activity. So in this case, I'm going to say select contact activity. Then I'm going to do dot. But instead of saying extra underscore, I'm instead going to call this result underscore contact underscore name. Now, this constant has not been created yet. That's why it's red. This code is now in an error state. I just want to finish this method first before we jump over into another class. Then I'm going to say text view set text you selected contact name. All right. Next up, I can do an else right here. I can say, otherwise, if the result code was not okay, I can say text view dot set text, there was an error. However, this isn't gonna happen in this video, but I just included it for, I just included it for completeness. And the last thing I'm gonna do is down here on else, I'm gonna do an else on the if request code. I'm gonna say super dot on activity result request code result code data. Now I do want to point out on activity result is one of the few Android methods that will not throw an exception if you don't call back into the superclass. That doesn't mean we shouldn't always call back into the superclass if we don't handle the code. Uh, the reason I like doing this is because in some circumstances I might have a base activity that might under some circumstances need to start another activity for a result. So I want to make sure that I handle this case. Okay, that's really about all we need here. So the last piece of the puzzle in this entire example is going to be going into the select contact activity, creating this constant value, and then setting the data. So let's go back into select contact activity. Up at the top, I'm going to say public static final string, and I'm going to paste in result contact name. I'm going to say result contact name. Okay, so how do we set a result? So we can finish now. And let's go ahead and see what, see what let's see what happens when we run this without doing anything extra because we're we are finishing, we are starting it for a result, meaning that on activity result will happen. It will be invoked. So let's go ahead and hit a button. Let's do contact 2. Look at that. It says there was an error. So basically what that means is the, I guess we did hit that code path after all. <laughs> basically what that means is the default result of an activity is an error code. It's something that is not result okay. So what we have to do is we have to set our own results. So what is, how do we do that? Well, we're going to use the quite aptly name, named set result. Now, there's two overloads to set result. One just takes in a result code. The other one takes in a result code and an intent. So we're going to use the second one. 
So I'm going to say result underscore OK, comma, data. Now, I haven't instantiated data yet. Uh, I'm kind of doing this top to bottom for, or bottom to top for some reason, kind of coding backwards. But um, so we have set result, result OK, and then we pass in that little, that little intent that we can create. So this is how we can set an error condition if we wanted to by setting our result to something that isn't result okay. All right, let's go ahead and create our data. So above our set result, I'm gonna say intent data equals new intent. And then I'm gonna say data put extra, and then I'm gonna pass in result contact name, and then I'm gonna pass in contact name. All right, let's go ahead and hit run. I think IntelliJ got a little confused because it's uh, squigglifying our thing. Uh, it went away. All right, good. Oh, and I just arrow shook all over my desktop. I hate that feature of Windows. That is the most annoying feature of Windows ever. Select a contact. Hit a button. Let's select contact three. You selected contact three. Let's select contact one. You selected contact one. Let's select contact two. You selected contact two. So we have communication going between two activities. All right, this video is running a little long. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do one more feature here. And then in the next video, we'll talk about a login screen as well as a main activity screen. So the last feature I wanna to put together is I wanna introduce one more activity and I want that activity to be a send friend request activity. The ability for an activity to search other users, select that user, and then treat that as if you selected that contact. So basically, I want to add a new feature to my select contact activity for searching for a new user. So let's do that. In my activity select contact layout file, I'm going to come down here and above my other buttons, I'm going to say, I'm going to create a new button. I'm going to say match parent wrap content. Then I'm going to say text search for contact. Then I'm going to say ID plus I or at ID or the at plus ID slash activity select contact. And then I'm going to say um, search. And then I'm going to say margin bottom is ATP. Okay, so now we have a search for contact button. Let's go ahead and implement it. Coming back into our select contact activity, I'm gonna go ahead and say find view by ID, R or well, first actually, at the top of the file, after I set my text view title, I'm going to say, actually, you know what? It really doesn't matter. I'm not gonna to try to be pretty with this. It doesn't matter. Uh, activity, select, contact, search. I will put this in this order, however, because this is how it appears in the UI. We have the search on the top, then our contact one through three on the bottom. Okay, so now we have our select contact search. Now, what is this going to do? This is actually going to do something fairly interesting. Basically, the idea is, is that it's going to thread the result of a new activity I'm about to create back into the main activity. So what I'm going to do here is up on my activities, I'm going to right click, select new, go down to activity and create a blank activity. And I'm going to say search contacts activity. Hit finish. Uh, just like before, uh, let's, let's knock out the uh, layout real fast. So I'm going to make it a linear layout instead of a relative layout. I'm going to give it an orientation of vertical. I'll remove this text view. I'll replace it with an edit text with a width of match parent, a height of wrap content, an ID of activity search contacts uh, search text. Sure. Uh, then I'm going to have a button. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a hint, too. I don't think I've shown you guys hints before. Anyway, uh, they're pretty cool. Then I'll have a button with a width of match parent, height of wrap content. Whoa, that is not even close to what I wanted. Match parent. There we go. Uh, text of um, search. ID of uh, activity search contacts do search. And then I'm also going to have a button 
of match parent wrap content with the text of cancel and an ID of activity search contacts cancel. So that's our layout. Um, if you're not caught up, go ahead and pause the video. Although I do recommend people get used to writing layouts and used to the autocomplete window. Anyway, now that we have that all set up, let's go ahead and finish up our search contacts act or uh, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and write this first. I'm gonna write our search contacts activity class first. So like I did before, I'm gonna nuke all of the internals of this method or of this uh, activity, because we're not worrying about options menus just yet. I'm gonna say final edit text text equals find or cast to edit text, find view by ID, r.id, search text, right there. And then I will say button, or well, in this case, I can just do find view by ID, id dot do search dot set on click listener, new on click listener. And then I'm not gonna write an implementation there yet. And then I'll say cancel set on click listener, new on click listener. Okay, so what do you think either of these on click handlers are gonna do? Well, one of them is gonna return the name of the person that they typed into the edit box back to the caller of this activity. The other one's just going to set the result to a cancel. They're both going to finish the activity. So in order to have data that we pass back to the caller of this activity, I want to go ahead and introduce a new constant. Just like how we did with our select contacts activity, we have the result contact name. So here, I'm going to say public static final string result contact name, which is the exact same, but they are semantically different. These are conceptually two different constants, and I highly do not recommend confusing the two or referencing one for the other. They should be treated completely separately. Okay, so for our search contacts button, what is that going to do? Well, it's going to create a new intent called data. Then it's going to say data put extra result contact name, and then I'm going to pass in text dot get text dot to string. And then I'm going to say set result, result OK, data, and I'm going to say finish. So just like what we did before with our select contact activity. For our cancel one, I'm going to say set result, result canceled, finish. Notice how I don't pass in an intent with extra data in the case that we cancel the activity. And that's really about it. So now what we can do is come back to select contact activity. And on our activity select contact search, we're going to start an activity for a result. So what I'm going to do here at the top is I'm going to create a private static final int um, request search contacts equals one. Then on this on click listener right here, the select contact search, I'm going to say start activity, f uh, so yeah, start activity for result, new intent. Oh, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. Uh, this is going to be interesting enough to where I'm going to do this on its own line. I was going to one liner it, but let's go ahead and do this on one line so I can talk about a very, very important fact of dealing with anonymous inner classes. So we'll say intent intent equals new intent. And then we'll naively pass in this like we do all the time, followed by search contacts activity dot class to specify an explicit intent. But wait a sec, we get an error. Why do we get an error? Remember, we are in an anonymous inner class. This inner class is not the same class as our select contact activity. This this does not refer to that this, right? This this refers to the inner classes instantiation, which is a completely different class. Does not re re uh, it does not refer to the select contact activity this. So how do we refer to the select contact activity this? We know it's there. I've been trying to really 
drive home the point that anonymous inner classes and inner classes in general have a hidden reference back to their parents this, right? Because we can access lo instance variables and instance methods, just like what we see right here. We can access instance, me instance methods from within a new class. How does it do that? It needs to have some sort of secret variable that points back to the parents this. Well, surprisingly, it's not that convoluted to get access to. Because instead of this, we can do select contact activity dot this. A little bit of a weird bit of syntax for people who might not be used to this sort of thing. But that's how anonymous interclasses work. If you want access to your parents this, you prefix the this with the parents name. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start activity for result, passing in our intent and then passing in our request code, which is gonna be request search contacts. All right. Now, what I'm gonna do down here is I'm gonna create an on activity for result. I'm gonna say override public, or should be protected, by the way, on the other one should be protected as well. Uh, on activity result int request code int result code intent data. All right, so what am I gonna do here? First thing, if result code or if request code equals request search contacts, if result code equals result okay, then extract the contact name from the data. So data dot git string extra passing in search contacts activity dot result contact name. Then say select contact contact name. Now, what if the result code was not result okay? Well, in that case, we would uh, just do nothing because that means they canceled out of that activity. All right, so let's go ahead and hit run. So let's go ahead and say, type in select a contact. So just to recap this entire video, this button results in a new activity being created and we pass data into that activity, right? And we can click on contact two and get data returned back in. Or we can say search for contact in which a new activity is created. We can type in a search query like a person thing. And if we say do search, watch what happens. It jumps all the way back down into main activity. And that's because the select contact activity on its on activity for result threads the result of the search back into the caller. So we can see the uh, the behavior here. So we start with, um, uh, oh, you know what? Hold on. Uh, I, I forgot to change the base class of search contacts activity to base activity. My mistake. I wanted to show you guys the activity lifecycle. Oh, and I closed the device. Of course I did. I'll be right back. All right, and back. It was funny because there's still a whole lot more stuff to talk about. Act or not a whole lot of stuff. There's still stuff to talk about activities and we're at like an hour already. Wow. Uh, select contact, hit a button, go to search for contact, do a search. Now watch the progression of the back stack. So we were in main, main was stopped, select contact activity was, well, select on, con, um, main was paused, select contact was created, started, resumed, main was stopped, and saved. Then when we hit the do search, select contact activity was paused. The search contact was created, started and resumed. Then the select contact was saved and stopped. Then the search was paused. And then the main activity was started. And then the select contact activity was destroyed. And then the search was destroyed. So notice how the on create and on start and on resume methods were not invoked in the activity that was sandwiched in between main 
and our search contact. So that's a really important note to make about how the life cycle works. So when I search for a contact, type in something and do a search, that middle activity right there, that select contact activity, doesn't get created or started. It just gets stopped and then destroyed. Finally, I can say cancel, and you notice how I come back right into the select contact activity. All right, so yeah, we'll definitely be seeing more examples of this particular behavior in a future video once we build up our app. But for now, I just wanted to get those concepts out of the way. We just hit the hour mark, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to end the video here, and we'll see you next time.